This video is going to focus on the First Amendment and more specifically things dealing with freedom of speech and press. So the bottom line is that in terms of speech, the Supreme Court and really the First Amendment protects two parts of your speech. The first part is what we call pure speech, which is like verbal expression, like you're actually saying something. Um, so that's protected. There are some limits, but generally that's protect, uh, protected. And then symbolic speech, which is different, that you're not saying anything with words, but you're using symbols or actions. That's also considered to be free speech. So for example, it's controversial, but like burning a flag, like you're not saying anything, it's an action that is in the eyes of the Supreme Court protected speech because it's like a political expression. So, so the First Amendment protects both pure and symbolic speech in the eyes of the Supreme Court. Now, there are a bunch of things that are not protected involving speech uh, by the First Amendment. So for example, libel is not protected. This is when somebody um, prints something um, or publishes something that they know is false and you're doing it just to hurt somebody's character or reputation. So we often see like these trashy, like celebrity tabloid magazines. Um, it's really hard to prove like libel. You have to be able to prove it a court that the person that printed it knew it was false and they were intending to do it just to be harmful and, and to hurt your character. That's not easy to prove. So like most celebrities won't even bother, but every once in a while you hear about one that does sue for libel. If you can prove it, it's not protected. Slander is very similar, except instead of printed speech, it's like spoken speech that, again, the person that's speaking knows it's false. You're making it up and you're intentionally doing it to hurt somebody's character or reputation. Again, also hard to prove in a court of law. Uh, libel is written, slander is spoken. Otherwise, like they're both the same. And if you can prove it, neither of them are protected. Seditious speech is not protected. What is seditious speech? Seditious speech is when you advocate for a violent overthrow of the government. That's not protected speech. I mean, you can speak out against the government, disagree with the government, but once you go that extra step and you advocate an overthrow of the government, that is not protected speech by the First Amendment. Additionally, any speech that creates a clear and present danger is not protected. All right, the old yelling fire in a theater, right? That's like the cliche example that if you're sitting in a movie theater and you don't like the movie and you're bored by it, and you just yell fire because you want to watch everybody like scramble out of the movie theater. That's not protected speech because you're putting other people in danger. Any kind of speech that puts people in danger is not protected. Um, obscene materials are not protected. Um, in 1964, Supreme Court Justice uh, Potter Stewart, in a case, um, was asked to define what obscene materials were. And he basically said, I know it when I see it. Well, that's not helpful, right, in terms of definition, because that's pretty arbitrary. What is obscene to one person is not obscene to another. But generally, the First Amendment does not protect obscene materials. Uh, any kind of inappropriate content on public TV or radio um is like really not protected speech can be limited um the federal communications act for example actually bans any kind of indecent languages or uh, images on public airwaves so this is not like cable this is not like satellite radio this is like broadcast tv regular radio right there's obviously restrictions on what can be shown and said um inappropriate content on the internet within government facilities this is also sort of restricted um so for example the children's internet protection act prohibits any individual for our example from accessing pornography on like a public library computer or something like that because they're they're run by like local government um and then in terms of any kind of restriction on the government there's something called prior restraints. Um, and this is a pretty, so the previous things were like restrictions on individuals exercising like speech or press. This is a restriction on what the government can do. The Supreme Court doesn't generally allow the government to exercise what's called prior restraints. And that's like the government stopping something before it is written or said. Um, like it never, like they prevent somebody from saying something or they prevent somebody from publishing something. Um, the Supreme Court almost never allows an individual to be stopped ahead of time from writing or saying something, from being exposed to prior restraints. Um, it would have to be like 
a really, really, really good reason for the government to prevent speech uh, or press from happening ahead of time. And the Supreme Court has rarely agreed to this. They can allow the government to deal with it after the fact, but generally are very reluctant to prevent it from happening um, at the first point. Right. So um, this covers speech and press and some of the restrictions on that.